Gas Trawl, 12,000 Feet, by Martin Cordial. The engine growls disconsolately as it powers through the darkness. Ancient steel groans. Rivulets of gray water run down girder beams. Sarche blinks in the gloom, pinching her nose at the smoggy air. Is it meant to sound like that? Sarche asks. Rain's white eyes hover in the shadows, joined by a broad checkerboard smile. The noise means she's working. When she's silent, then there's trouble, he says. How often is there trouble? Most every day, he laughs. But never something I can't fix. I was born here on the gas troll. Just near where you're standing, in fact. I came out blinking with a rivet wrench in hand. I learned to climb these ladders before I learned to walk. These engines I know better than my heartbeat. I've always treated old Troll right, and she'll treat me right. So don't you worry. She'll be fine as long as I'm here. Sarshi smiles. All right, I'll be back after lunch to help with the welding. Gonna go meet the proctor. Rain's frown creases his grease-blackened brow. Might want to step lightly around that one, Sashi, he says. He doesn't like being interrupted from his papers. Sashi steps carefully down a damp metal corridor. She's still learning her way around the trawl. It's a structure designed for utility, not comfort. Machine, not human being. Yet here she is, 12,000 feet underwater, with only the trawl to keep her breathing and its crew to keep her company. Rain is the best of them, and as the chief engineer, he's who she'll be spending most of her days with. But Sarshi is yet to meet the vessel's proctor, Treshin. Every gas trawl has a proctor on board, a standard practice required by the maritime organ. Frankly, Sarshi has little patience for pushers of papers and prayers. But if she's to spend the next month in the trawl with the man, she'd better say hello. Sarshi finds Treshin's cabin in a remote corner of the vessel, far from the ceaseless drone of the engines. The proctor's door is ajar, with an eerie green glow leaking from within. Sarshi, curious, knocks on the metal door as she eases the door open, and is struck at the space Treshin has made for himself. Instead of using the standard fluorescent fittings on the ceiling, Treshin has lined the walls with shelves of thick glass jars. Each contains a different luminescent sea thing. Floating fronds of seagrass, pale fleshy masses that slowly pulse. Shimmering strands and filaments that drift in slow circles. And an agitated-looking crab. Dozens of them, in a dozen neatly stacked jars, emit the only lighting in the room. The eerie glow throws alien shadows across the study, barely lighting the equipment in the room. Treshin has lined the trawl's bare metal walls with papers, maps, book stacks, scholarly equipment, lenses, brass stands, compasses, calipers perch precariously, strange silhouettes against the green glow. Amidst it all, scribbling intently at some papers, is the proctor himself. Sarshi knocks again at the open door, but Treshin doesn't hear her. He's got some old-school earbuds in, his head bobbing perceptibly to some music. Sarshi stands puzzled for a moment. This wasn't quite what she was expecting. Most other proctors she's encountered have been fairly minimalist. The spirit is made of thought and verse, not of coin and stone, says the scripture of the maritime organ. Many of their proctors flirt with asceticism. One of the few material luxuries they use are extra lighting, to better commune with the light of above. Yet here Treshin is, lurking in this alien glow. Sarshi wants to know why. She remembers Rain's warning, but how bad can Treshin be? If she's got to spend a month on board the trawl with this man, Sarshi won't spend it tiptoeing around his little secrets. She taps Treshin on the shoulder. He jumps, 
startled, and turns on her with ferocity. What are you doing? Who are you? He hisses, pulling papers to his chest protectively. He yanks the earbuds from his ears, and Sarsha hears the tinny noise they emit, swinging about his skinny neck. Sarsha takes a step back. Uh, Apologies, she says curtly. I didn't mean to disturb you. I'm Louisa Sarshi, just transferred from Subdoc today, here to assist Engine Head Rain for this quarter. Then you have no business here. His eyes gleam cold behind his spectacles. Sarshi pauses. What exactly are you working on here? She asks, eyeing the papers at his chest. What? Treshin spits indignantly. I'm the proctor on this vessel. It's not your place to question. I told you, Proctor, I'm not with your organ. I'm from Subtech. And as a mechanical officer, it is my place to know how trawl facilities are being used. She points to a junction box in the corner of Treshin's room. If I can't access the ventilation system here, how can I keep the trawl running and the crew safe? Sarshi pointedly meets the Proctor's glare. He fumes for a moment. Fine, he says. What do you need to know? I'm Proctor on this vessel. I perform my ecclesiastical duties to keep this vessel in communion with the above. May we be bathed in the light of above. Sarshi recognizes the phrase. There's a standard response. And the above be. But she opts not to give Treshin the satisfaction. And the jars? She asks. Samples, Treshin says defensively, fiddling with his earbuds. Rain gave me permission to study the submarine life we discover. Much of it has never been seen before, and cannot survive on the surface. Our only opportunity to understand these creatures is here, amidst their native habitat. And is the study of extremophile marine life part of your usual ecclesiastical duties? Sarshi prods. Treshin is stone-faced. Rain gave me permission, he replies. And what about these papers? Sarshi presses. Maps, Treshin says. Records. The organ library is surviving reports from past expeditions in this area. I'm studying these to find any details that may prove useful in the month ahead. And have you found anything useful? Sarshi asks. Not as yet. Treshin breaks her gaze. Not as yet. Fine, Sarshi says. Sorry for disturbing you. I'll leave you to your studies. She leaves the man standing in the green shadows, amidst his glass jars and old papers. Sarshi doesn't expect further issues with Treshin. She won't actually have to access the junction box in his room. It's from an old defunct system and is of no concern to anyone.